Hello and welcome back to an episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Sorry for this kind of subpar lighting and camera setup here in my home. Obviously, as you know, the world has been an interesting place uh, the past few weeks with coronavirus. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the world is canceled and aliens surprisingly didn't even do it. Or so we're told. No, but seriously, coronavirus is our world right now. And there are a million videos on YouTube telling you exactly what's going on, even though nobody has any effing clue. This is a very serious virus, and so it is critical that people have the information they need to keep themselves safe. And while the CDC might have their doctors and complicated graphs, and news outlets like Vox might have their fancy charts and complete lack of self-awareness, we have our ridiculous analogies to sci-fi franchises. Which is why today we are going to take a look at Halo, specifically the spread of the flood, in order to articulate some lessons about how we might go about dealing with the coronavirus. There are obviously major differences between the two, such as that the coronavirus cannot take over and operate human weaponry and vehicles. And the Flood, of course, is a parasite that has attacked the galaxy repeatedly throughout the last 100 years, replicating through feeding on life, whereas the coronavirus is a virus that doesn't feed, but rather just hijacks an organism's cells. Still, the Flood spread might be able to teach us a lot about how to deal with pandemics like the coronavirus. The first lesson is that people should not play with nature incautiously. Now I imagine what comes to people's minds here is human technological and scientific innovation inadvertently leading to the rise of dangerous things such as weapons, viruses, bacteria, etc. that are injurious to humans. It's a bit more simplistic in the case of COVID-19. The Chinese government was not careful in its regulation of wildlife farming. Thus, Chinese wet markets are rampant with dangerous viruses, bacteria, and parasites that can infect and kill humans, as we saw with the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan, China, the most probable geographical genesis for the disease. As it turns out, tornadoes, asteroids, the new Star Wars trilogy, and other uncontrollable circumstances can devastate humanity, and so too can humanity's own actions and inventions. In the Halo universe, tens of millions of years before the Human Covenant War, a prehistoric version of humans existed in the galaxy. When the Precursors, an ancient advanced alien race who served as the guardians of the galaxy in those times, chose humans as their successors, another advanced alien race known as the Forerunners got all pissy and attacked the Precursors, wiping most of them out. The Precursors who were able to survive and escape transmuted themselves into a dust that could be regenerated into their original forms at a later time, and stored the dust in automated starships that would float through the galaxy. However, over time the dust deteriorated and would cause any life it came into contact with to get sick and mutate. Some hundred thousand years before the Human Covenant War, ancient humans discovered these ships and the precursor dust stored within them. Humans studied the dust and concluded that it was harmless, despite not really fully understanding it, and even though they had observed the psychotropic effects it had on lower animals. These humans decided to go ahead and start administering doses of the dust to their pets, most notably a species called Feru, in order to render them more docile. Little did humans know, the dust was slowly mutating the genes of these animals. After a few hundred years of this, the Feru started to exhibit more pronounced mutations and became more aggressive and started consuming other organisms. Soon this disease spread to humans and aliens such as the San Shiyum, the species that made up the leadership cast of the Covenant. Thus the flood invasion of the galaxy had begun. Had humans been more careful in exposing their societies to precursor dust, or had they spent more time studying it before allowing it to be administered to their pets, the flood nightmare that haunted the galaxy for hundreds of thousands of years might have never come to pass. Human curiosity and ingenuity is what makes humanity special. But while such traits help humans to persist in a dangerous reality, at times they also threaten the human race. But perhaps even this is too generous for the coronavirus outbreak. The Chinese government knew what science said about the dangers of mixing wildlife in wet markets. After all, the 2003 SARS outbreak also most likely began in a Chinese wet market. And despite a temporary ban on wildlife farming following that outbreak, business mostly went back to normal soon after because the wildlife farming industry in China is very powerful and influential. So these wildlife farmers continue to be incautious with nature, and thus COVID-19 eventually jumped to humans. 
The next lesson to take from the flood is that in times of potential pandemic, communication and cooperation are key. During the original spread of the flood, the forerunners were highly suspicious of the humans' claims about the spread of this new disease. Humans had attempted to quarantine infected worlds and systems, but they needed forerunner cooperation as co-arbiters of the galaxy. However, when the humans began destroying infected forerunner ships without giving the forerunners prior warning, many forerunners began to theorize that the flood was a made-up ploy to cover for humanity's expansionist goals. I mean, just think about that for a second. America isn't exactly on the most friendly of terms with Iran, but imagine we just like blew up half of their country and we're like, uh, no, don't worry, uh, that part of the country was infected with the disease. We were gonna tell you, but we didn't have time. Uh, it probably would seem a little suspicious. But as I was alluding to, the humans acted unilaterally in order to attack the flood as quickly as possible. But the ultimate consequence of this was the human forerunner war, which led to galaxy-wide devastation and eventually to humans being devolved and subjugated. Obviously, the lesson to take from this is that in times of great fear and panic, terrible things can happen as a result of miscommunication or lack of communication. According to various media outlets, China held back information about COVID-19 from the rest of the world for months, and the consequence was that the world was much less prepared for the outbreak, costing possibly thousands of more lives than necessary. And furthermore, you can see how lots of chaos has been fomenting around the world, especially between the US and China, as the US casts blame on China for the virus and the Chinese government peddles conspiracy theories that the US military spread the disease. Listen, I mean, assigning blame is probably not important amidst the virus spiraling out of control. We can deal with that later. What we need to do right now is all play on Team Human so that nothing worse happens during the course of this virus's spread. Related to the lesson about communication is the lesson that strong leadership is essential to successfully beating this virus. Following the original outbreak of the flood, most forerunners didn't actually believe that this parasite was real. However, high-ranking forerunners were well aware of the threat and began developing countermeasures in case the flood returned, especially because the flood retreated somewhat on its own. In my opinion, the decision to keep their subjects in the dark was a poor one on behalf of the forerunner leaders. Leaders who with more openness could possibly have prevented or at least delayed the human forerunner war, and ever more importantly, could have been more prepared for the second outbreak of the parasite thousands of years later. Just the same in our universe, we have to kind of hope and pray that our leaders make the right decisions in times of crisis. Despite me teasing them earlier, a great Vox video on Chinese wet markets explains that the masses of Chinese people don't eat wildlife or want wildlife farming to be allowed, but their government allowed it for the sake of the rich and powerful. Then, in Italy, their leaders didn't effectively convince their citizens of the danger of COVID-19 and failed to lock down their country in time. And as a result, they have experienced catastrophic consequences in terms of number of cases and fatalities. For those of you out there watching from democratic nations and planets, I say, choose your leaders carefully because even though all options might seem to suck sometimes in times of crisis, you at least want the best person in charge. The next lesson is to believe warnings and to err on the side of caution. Sometimes panic turns out to be unwarranted, but hey, better to be safe than extra sorry. As I've already explained, the forerunners didn't act fast enough during the first outbreak of the flood, as most of their kind simply didn't believe it to be a real threat. During the second outbreak that came about 10,000 years later, the forerunners greatly underestimated the threat of the flood, and thus were once again not ready to fight it as aggressively as they needed to. This ultimately led to the forerunners being forced to use weapons of mass destruction, including finally the Halo Array, on their own populations in order to wipe out the flood. The flood might have been defeated, but the forerunners almost went extinct in the process. There are, of course, consequences for taking extreme measures to combat disease, such as shutting down economies and keeping people in their houses. But given some of the projections for what could happen if the disease was allowed to spread freely, we might prefer damaging economies to millions dead. We don't know enough about the coronavirus yet to determine what it will do for sure. And like the flood, it could even mutate and become stronger. Now, even if it sounds somewhat contradictory to the last lesson, the final lesson is that we should not overreact to the virus, but we should learn from it and be more prepared for the next one. 
After the first outbreak of the flood, the Forerunner leaders argued what kinds of countermeasures should be developed in the case of a future flood threat. The Builder cast wanted to build the Halo Array, a system of superweapons situated throughout the galaxy that when fired could wipe out the flood's food, a la every living thing in the galaxy, and thus starve the flood to death. On the other hand, the Warrior Servant cast wanted to develop advanced military strategies for wiping out the Flood, a much less extreme option. As a side note, this is why we should never let engineers and scientists completely run society, because on the way to saving us all, they'll kill us all. But anyway, the Builder's plan won out, and the Array was put in place and was employed to end the second Flood outbreak, thus wiping out all sentient life in the galaxy save for the species preserved on the Ark, the installation from which the entire Array could be activated. Now it's true that it's possible that without the Array, all of the life in the galaxy might have been assimilated in the Flood. And it's also true that it's impossible to know if the Builder's military alternative would have worked. But no doubt, activating the Array was an extreme, extreme measure. The point here is that the coronavirus will change the world forever, and we have to be careful that in changing the way we operate in order to make everyone safer, that we don't make changes that are unnecessarily extreme and that could also lead to dark consequences for the human race. In light of the coronavirus outbreak, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio called for the nationalization of major industries so that the government can adapt such industries to produce essential supplies for combating the virus. This is a case for a nationalization, literally a nationalization of crucial factories. So you can see how panic and fear can lead people to call for and accept radical changes to our society. And it will be up to us and our leaders to make the necessary steps to improve safety while also refraining from overcompensating with drastic changes that inhibit our fundamental rights. Was eliminating the flood with the halo array worth wiping out all sentient life in the galaxy? That's a difficult and perhaps impossible question to answer. After the last major outbreak of the flood in the 2500s, an outbreak that was stifled only due to a thermonuclear explosion and the activation of a halo array installation, the UNSC began to train its Spartans to contain and battle the flood, a much less extreme alternative to fighting an outbreak than the array presents. Anyways, I want to know what you think. In order to prepare for the next pandemic, should we say, put better procedures in place for providing medical care and locking down populations, or should we just build a giant super weapon that's capable of wiping out all sentient life in the galaxy and thus providing the virus with no life to host it? You just let me know in the comments. Anyways, that is the video. Hope you did enjoy it. Let me know how you're doing out there in the world during this chaotic time. You will be in my thoughts. Um, as always, do please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. That's not subscribing, that's a thumbs up. But hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, again, I hope that you're all doing okay out there and I wish you good luck. For now, my name is American Ben and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.